Use your faith. Psalm 103, VV 1 to 11. WBGS Harvey, Chicago. You have not tuned into this broadcast, but actually, God has you listening to this service for a reason. You are at the right place, listening to the right thing at the right time. Because. for a miracle. Thank you so much for tuning in. The focus of this broadcast is to extend an invitation to Jesus Christ to deliver the word of God without hesitation and to offer prayer for the sick and every situation in your life. This is your day for a miracle. Stay tuned with your host, Brother Andre Murphy. And know that it only You know that the prayer line is open. We're so happy to have uh, 
I have prayer counselor back, Sister Nancy. My prayers is back in the prayer room. We thank God for her making her uh, way safely. And also, Sister Helen Phillips, we so glad to have you in the prayer room today as well. And our engineer, we're glad to have you back. So I want you to sit back back. I want you to keep it locked. I want you to text somebody, as I say, each and every week. Text somebody, email somebody, and tell somebody, listen, this is your day for a miracle is on the air. And all you have to do is call them up and tell them what you want. Somebody's going to get a miracle today. Somebody's going to get a, a breakthrough. Somebody's going to get an answer to their prayer today. You know, in fact, I think you should uh, write down uh, the, tech, the, the prayer line number to dial in 773-752-2252. The, the telephone number to call for prayer right now is 773-752-2252. We want you to keep it locked, and we'll be right back after this. And also, uh, I want you to know that uh, we want to thank so many people that are listening to us on the, on the SoundCloud. Uh, we've been working on our website, and I want to take a moment to thank you, uh, to take, thank so many people that have liked our, our page on our website at IndianMethodMinistries.com. And I want you to know that God is yet moving by his power uh, and by his spirit. And no matter what you're going through, God is doing a great work in you. So hold on a little while, Lord, your help is coming in the morning. Just hold on a little while, Lord. Sometimes there are obstacles in the road that can leave you feeling low, and you don't know how to move forward. And sometimes there are times you want to take, but the way gets hard to trace. Now you're wondering how did you get here, but don't you give up. Until you see how God is ordering your steps so you can walk into your seats, even has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform. God is faithful to perform. Even has begun a great work in you. It's faithful to perform our God's faith. You will know the favor of the Lord and receive a harvest for your seed. And if you try, God will blow your mind. To bless the world and to lose A great, great work in you It's able to perform It's God, it's able to perform Oh, you may have A great work in you God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. Thank you. 
faithful to perform. God is faithful to perform. You are a to the Lord. From the book of St. Mark, St. Mark, 
the second chapter of St. Mark. I'll talk to you um, from their book. Um, well, let's begin our reading uh, on the second chapter of St. Mark, verse number one. And it says that a few days later, when Jesus again entered into Capernaum, the people heard that he had come. They gathered in such large numbers that they were there was no room, not even outside the door. And Jesus, he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him paralyzed men, cried by four of them, since they could not get him to Jesus. Because the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it. And they lowered the man, lowered the man down with a mat that was lying on that the man was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are be given, are forgiven. I want to talk to you about it's not too late to use your faith. That's what I want to talk about this morning. It's not too late to use your faith. A lot of times people give up on their dream, they give up on their their uh, their desires, but you know that a lot of things that we have now is because of result of us using our faith. Can I get a witness? There are so many times. Uh, I don't know how many you can uh, testify. I know I could testify. I have t- decided to almost turn back because of being discouraged. But you know what? One thing I found out is it looked like even when you cannot see your way, if you just try anyway and keep on trying, eventually something will work. Can I get a witness? You have, you have to, sometimes you have to try when it when it looks like it's not going to, to ever get any better. If you just keep on trying, you know, and, and so he says that in the in uh, chapter two in the fourth verse, and he says that, and when they could not, they couldn't get the man to Jesus, is what they, because there were so many people everywhere Jesus went, there was always a crowd that would follow Jesus because they knew, uh, heard of his wonderful works, they heard of his miracles, and they wanted, they wanted to see, um, see the blind um, eyes open. They wanted to see the the uh, the deaf to hear, and they wanted to hear the the mute speak, and they wanted to see the the paralyzed people walk. You know, but one thing Jesus had in mind, he wants you to know that that wasn't the whole story. You know, miracles is one thing, but salvation is another. And then, you know, no matter how how good we try to be, we always can use some help from God. And so what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to make this morning is, no matter how successful we are in life, don't forget about Jesus. Don't forget about Jesus. Don't forget to let Jesus be your guide. And somebody says, well, if Jesus is my guide, and, and we sometimes we talk about being a disciple, and in being a disciple, the first word that we see in in, um, in disciple is discipline. In other words, I stop, uh, as Jesus said, it's not my will, but the will of the Father that has sent me. So a disciple means that you are following after uh, you are a good follower, and you are someone that's, that's wrapped up and tangled up in, in, in the, uh, the mandate or the calling of Christ. And I'm going to walk in, into the newness of God. So when when they could not get to a place in front of Jesus because of the because of the crowd, they dug a hole or they dug a, a opening in the roof above him. And when they they cut it out, the opening, they let the man down through uh, through a crook or through through the roof and and upon which the the paralyzed was was laying. So you know what? You know, the, the point is, so the miracles, Jesus says, I'm, I'm not working these miracles just for people to, to believe that I'm a miracle worker. Jesus said, well, the main thing, the reason why I'm working the miracles is because I want you to believe that there is better, uh, that you have, that you don't have to live in the way that you are. You don't have to, you don't have to, 
to live. Every one of Jesus' disciples that he called, he always called them in from from being. They, uh, he says Peter, and they was watching their net. Peter and James were watching their net, and he said he found them. It says that when he found them washing their net, he says, "Come and follow me." But he said that the, the strange, the amazing thing about the story about the disciples, every one of them that he called was found doing a job while they was, Jesus called them while they were doing their job. So I want to say, don't stop doing God's will because sometimes um, it doesn't work out like the way you thought it would work out, or because there's a, a, a slow, a slow period. But that don't mean that God's not with you. It just means that, you know, that's why he says, God loves us and he uses us and he and he provides us and he rewards us by our faith. You can't do anything without faith. I mean, you know, when you got up this morning, you used your faith. When you walked, when you got up this morning, you got up to bed, you used your faith without even knowing. You got up out the bed, and, and and when you got up, you used your faith. When you walk over to the washroom, walk over to the bedroom, when you got dressed this morning, when you when you put the soap and water on there, and you got the toothpaste, and everything you did this morning, before you got to this point, you had to use your faith. I'm talking to somebody this morning, right now, you sick and you don't believe that you can't get well. And but God sent me on 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 a mission journey, and He let, and He gave me this letter to tell you by by way of of heaven that listen, you don't have to stay in the sickness that you in. There is a way out. Somebody got, you know, you got um, they say that you got a disease that's uncurable. I don't even know the name of of, the, of your disease, but I know that Jesus can heal every one of them. And so and so you know, no matter what you got. Jesus can heal it. I want to let you know, don't let this part or uh, whatever that has you uh, feeling like you cannot uh, be healed. Because just because one part of your body might be uh, ill or sick, don't let the don't let it paralyze the rest of your body. You know, you got to be able, listen, I'm gonna, even though I, I walked out in the studio today and I said to myself, you know what, I believe that God is yet a miracle in God. He is, he's yet able to open a door uh, not seen. He's able to do anything that uh, that we ask. So he says the first thing we notice is this man could not get where he wanted to go by himself unless he crawled on all four of his on his hands and and his and his knees. He had or or he had a, a, a par paralysis which caused him to have a disease of the brain or his spinal cord. The second thing we notice is that this man was in pain, and also he was in a state of misery. I don't know about you. Somebody this morning, uh, I know that you you in pain. Maybe I can't see you uh, in the natural. Maybe uh, nobody don't come to see you like they like they like they used to come, and you are there all alone. But God told me to tell you, listen, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody said, where is that found? Hebrews 13 and 5. He says, not, and not only that, but I'm right there with you. And you know what? I'm going to fix this situation that you're in. So most importantly, we notice that this man was humble enough to accept somebody to help him. He in other words, you know, a lot of times when, when people get sick, I, I say sometimes when people get sick, a lot of times they're not you know, in a position for anybody to help them because they won't receive the help. You know, if you want to, if you want to get get from A to to B, then you gotta be able to let somebody help you on on your on your first level before you can get to the second level. So he, so the first thing we notice is that he was humble enough to accept him, accept the help from someone else. And whenever we we ask God to help us, you know what? God will send somebody to help us. So I want you, I hope you enjoyed the message today. And I want to let you know that God still cares about you. And no matter what you're going through this morning, I want you to know that God cares about you and he and He has a way of escape. I don't care what you got to suffer. And somebody said, well, I'm in prison. And look, they told me they, they, I'd never get out. Listen, God is able to do anything but fail. If you just call, the Bible says, if you just call on the name of Jesus, that he will hear and answer prayer. Not only that, if you call on the name of Jesus sincerely, that he said that he will save you, and then that he will forgive you, and, and then you know what? He will forgive you of, of your sin. But you know what? You got to walk in the word of God. You got to get the word out of God, word of God out, and read it sometimes, you know? And, and, and where he says, wait on the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31 says, wait on the Lord. And he will, uh, you know, wait, I 
I say on the Lord, and he will strengthen thy heart. So I want you to have a good week. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't, don't, uh, 